Hi everyone, I'm Jackie, and I'm here to help you pass your U.S. citizenship interview. Today, I'll go over the official 100 civics questions by group, and I'll give you some really helpful tips so you don't want to miss it. All right, get comfortable, get your drinks, your snacks, whatever you need, and let's get started. All right, the first group is people. Let's talk all about the people. First question, who was the first president? This is an easy one, George Washington. The next question is related. Who is the father of our country? George Washington. All right, so there's two questions and George Washington is the answer. Next question. Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Thomas Jefferson. All right, next one. The Federalist Papers supported the passage of the U.S. Constitution. Name one of the writers. Alexander Hamilton. And have you ever heard of the Broadway show Hamilton? That was actually about Alexander Hamilton who wrote the Federalist Papers. Okay. Who was president during World War I? Woodrow Wilson. How can you remember that? World War plus Woodrow Wilson is WW. You won't forget it now, huh? Next question. Who was president during the Great Depression and World War II? Franklin D. Roosevelt. And you can remember that because the Great Depression, D, and Franklin D. Roosevelt, right? That helps you remember. All right. Before he was president, Eisenhower was a general. What war was he in? World War II. What is one thing Benjamin Franklin is famous for? He was a U.S. diplomat. And if you've seen the $100 bill, he's also on that, probably because he was a U.S. diplomat. Next question. What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? He freed the slaves. That was through the Emancipation Proclamation. Very important. What did Susan B. Anthony do? She fought for women's rights. And the easiest way to remember that is that Susan was a woman. So she fought for women's rights. What did Martin Luther King Jr. do? He fought for civil rights. And if you haven't seen his famous speech, I Have a Dream, definitely check it out. What is the name of the President of the United States now? Joe Biden. Hopefully you know that one. What is the name of the Vice President of the United States now? Kamala Harris. What is the name of the Speaker of the House of Representatives now? Kevin McCarthy. I hope you know that one now. 
Who is the Chief Justice of the United States now? John Roberts. Who lived in America before the Europeans arrived? The Native Americans. Name one American Indian tribe in the United States. Easiest one to remember is crow, like the bird. What group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? Africans. All right, that's it for the people. See how easy that was? Did you get them all right? Let's move on to the next section, which is parts of the government. First question. What is the economic system in the United States? Market economy. The next question is a bonus question that they sometimes ask at the interview. So I want you to be prepared. Let's see if you know it. What is the form of government of the United States? Republic. And don't get the form of government confused with our economic system. So our economic system is market economy and our form of government is republic. Next question. Who does a U.S. Senator represent? All people of the state. Why do some states have more representatives than other states? Because they have more people. California has a ton of U.S. representatives versus Alaska doesn't have a lot of people there, so they actually only have one. All right, next question. Under our Constitution, some powers belong to the federal government. What is one power of the federal government? To print money. So all of our money is printed by the federal government. Under our Constitution, some powers belong to the states. What is one power of the states? To give a driver's license. If you think about it, if you look at your driver's license, it always has your state on it and they look very different state to state. All right, the next several questions are about the three branches of government. And I think these are probably the hardest questions to remember. So we have three branches. We have the legislative, we have the executive, and the judicial. So legislative is Congress, executive is the president, and judicial are the courts. What stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful? Checks and balances. They gotta make sure everything is fair. So checks and balances. Who makes federal laws? Congress. What are the two parts of the U.S. Congress? The Senate and the House of Representatives. What does the judicial branch do? Reviews laws. What is the highest court in the United States? The Supreme Court. And you can think of the Supreme Court as superior, the best, the very top. Who signs bills to become law? The president. And I always picture the president 
signing the bills on his desk. Who vetoes bills? Again, the president. So, either signing bills or vetoing bills. Name one branch or part of the government. The president. That's the easiest to remember to me. Who is in charge of the executive branch? Again, that's the president. And executive, you can think about the CEO, chief executive officer of a company, is like the president. Who is the commander in chief of the military? The president. What does the president's cabinet do? Advises the president. And you can picture them all around the table discussing and advising. What are two cabinet level positions? The vice president and the attorney general. If the president can no longer serve, who becomes president? Pretty straightforward, the vice president. If both the president and the vice president can no longer serve, who becomes president? The Speaker of the House. And if you'll notice, often when the president is giving a formal speech, you'll have the vice president and the Speaker of the House behind the president. So you can kind of think of it like that. What are the two major political parties in the United States? Democratic and Republican. What is the political party of the president now? Democratic. All right, so that was the hardest part to me, the parts of the government. Now we're gonna move on to numbers. Are you good at remembering numbers? Let's see. Okay, how many justices are on the Supreme Court? Nine. Remember, there has to be an odd number for them to make a decision. So nine. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 27. Not sure how to remember that. If you have a way, leave me a comment and let me know, but 27 amendments. How many U.S. Senators are there? 100. There's two for each state. There's 50 states, so 100 Senators. The House of Representatives has how many voting members? 435. That one you just gotta remember. 435, It's a lot of people. All right, now let's move on to the dates. See if you know these dates. We elect a U.S. representative for how many years? Two. We elect a president for how many years? Four. We elect a U.S. senator for how many years? Six. So it's two, four, six. Two is the House of Representatives, four is the president, and six is the senator. And an easy tip to remember that is six and senator both start with S, right? That's a good one. 
In what month do we vote for president? It's always November. And that's the same month as Thanksgiving. So we vote and there's Thanksgiving. Always together, November. When is the last day you can send in federal income tax forms? April 15th. Nobody likes this day because nobody likes to pay taxes. <laughs> April 15th. When was the Declaration of Independence adopted? July 4th, 1776. July 4th, you should know because that's Independence Day every year. So you just have to remember July 4th, 1776. When was the Constitution written? 1787. And the way to remember that is that we had the Declaration of Independence, 1776, and then later the Constitution was written. So the Constitution was written in 1787. When do we celebrate Independence Day? You've already gone over this. July 4th. Gotta have a barbecue, be outside, enjoy the summer weather. Fireworks. Next question. When must all men register for the selective service? At age 18. How old do citizens have to be to vote for president? 18 and older. So it's the same age. All men have to register for the selective service at age 18 and you can vote at age 18. All right, so those were all of the numbers and dates. Hope you got those right. Now let's move on to geography. So get out your mental map and let's see if you can get these questions. What territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? Louisiana. Think of a Louis Vuitton purse from France. That helps me remember. What is the capital of the United States? Washington, D.C. And I actually went to the Capitol and visited the White House on a Segway tour, which I highly recommend if they still do that. Very fun. Next question. Name one of the two longest rivers in the United States. The Mississippi River. And Mississippi, that word, is so long that we actually use it to count. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. So, super long word, super long river. What ocean is on the west coast of the United States? So, this is the Pacific Ocean. And if you need a way to remember that, W for west and P for Pacific are close together in the alphabet. What ocean is on the east coast of the United States? The Atlantic Ocean. So just like the W and P, the E for east and the A for Atlantic are close together in the alphabet. So east coast, Atlantic, west coast, Pacific. Name one U.S. territory. Puerto Rico. People love to vacation there. I've never been. Have you? Why does the flag have 50 stars? B 
because there are 50 states. Pretty straightforward. Why does the flag have 13 stripes? Because there were 13 original colonies. There were 13 original states. Name three. New York, New Jersey, and New Hampshire. I find it easiest to remember all the ones that have news. Where is the Statue of Liberty? In the New York Harbor. And I actually got to climb all the way up to the crown. And I was a little disappointed because the windows are very small on there but it is a great view of the New York Harbor. All right, next question. Name one state that borders Canada. New York. Name one state that borders Mexico. California. All right, so that's all of the geography. And now we're going to move on to the group of important documents. What did the Declaration of Independence do? That's kind of in the question. It declared our independence from Great Britain. What is the supreme law of the land? The Constitution. That's what all of our laws are based on. What happened at the Constitutional Convention? It's also in the question. The Constitution was written. That's easy, huh? What does the Constitution do? It sets up the government. The idea of self-government is in the first three words of the Constitution. What are these words? We the people. What is an amendment? A change to the Constitution. What do we call the first 10 amendments to the Constitution? The Bill of Rights. What is one right or freedom from the First Amendment? Speech. We all love our freedom of speech. Very important in America. There are four amendments to the Constitution about who can vote. Describe one of them. Any citizen can vote. And this is the reason many of you want to become U.S. citizens, to vote. What is the name of the national anthem? The Star Spangled Banner. Do you know it? Okay, so now we're gonna move on to rights and responsibilities. What is the rule of law? Everybody must follow the law. What are two rights in the Declaration of Independence? Two L's. Life and liberty. What are two rights of everyone living in the United States? Freedom of speech and 
freedom of religion. What is freedom of religion? You can practice any religion or not practice a religion. What do we show loyalty to when we say the Pledge of Allegiance? The United States. Pretty straightforward. What is one promise you make when you become a United States citizen? To be loyal to the United States. What is one responsibility that is only for United States citizens? To vote in a federal election. Name one right only for United States citizens. Again, to vote in a federal election. So it is your right and your responsibility to vote in a federal election. What are two ways that Americans can participate in their democracy? Again, they can vote or they can run for office. All right, now let's move on to wars and events. Are you a history buff? then you'll do well in this section. What is one reason colonists came to America? Freedom. We all want freedom, right? Why did the colonists fight the British? Because of high taxes. It was taxation without representation. Nobody likes high taxes. Mm -mm. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. The Civil War. Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. Again, the Civil War. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. Slavery. What did the Emancipation Proclamation do? It freed the slaves. And do you remember who wrote that? Abraham Lincoln. So he freed the slaves through the Emancipation Proclamation. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1900s. World War II. So remember, the Civil War was in the 1800s. And in the 1900s, you can answer World War II. Who did the United States fight in World War II? Japan, Italy, and Germany. And how I remember that is the acronym JIG. Japan, Italy, Germany. J-I-G. During the Cold War, what was the main concern of the United States? Communism. What movement tried to end racial discrimination? The Civil Rights Movement. And don't confuse that with the Civil War. So the Civil Rights Movement tried to end racial discrimination and the Civil War was over slavery. 
What major event happened on September 11th, 2001 in the United States? Terrorists attacked the United States. Name two national U.S. holidays. Independence Day and Christmas. That's my favorite holiday. What are your two favorite U.S. holidays? The last group is very special because the answers may vary depending on where you live. So you're gonna to have to look these up to make sure you get them right. Who is one of your state's U.S. Senators now? The answer depends on where you live. Remember, there are two senators per state, so you can just choose one to remember. Name your U.S. Representative. This one's a little bit trickier because you actually have to enter your address, not just your zip code, to figure out who represents you. So we'll have the link in the description, but make sure you look this up correctly. Who is the governor of your state now? Do you know? Hope so. There's only one governor of your state, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. All right, last question, and it's pretty easy. Let's see if you know it. What is the capital of your state? All right, that's it. I hope this was helpful and the by group was helpful to you. I find that's the easiest way to study. Make sure you check out our other videos and good luck. I know you can do it. Bye, see you next time.